grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Siblings in Christ, on this most holy night, when our Savior Jesus Christ passed from death to life, we gather with the church throughout the world in vigil and prayer. This is the Passover of Jesus Christ. Through light and the word, through water and oil, bread and wine, we proclaim Christ's death and resurrection, share Christ's triumph over sin and death, and await Christ's coming again in glory. Let us pray. Eternal God, in Jesus Christ, you have given the light of life to all the world. Bless this new fire and increase in us a desire to shine forth with the brightness of Christ's rising until we feast at the banquet of eternal light through the Son of Righteousness, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ, yesterday and today, the beginning and the ending. To Christ belongs all time and all ages. To Christ belongs glory and dominion, now and forever. Amen. rising in glory, dispel the darkness of our hearts and minds. The light of Christ, thanks be to God. the light of Christ. Thanks be to God. The light of Christ, thanks be to God. Rejoice now, all heavenly powers, sing choirs of angels, exalt all creation around God's throne, Jesus Christ is risen. Celebrate the divine mysteries with exaltation, one for so great the victory. 
of salvation. Rejoice, O earth, in shining splendor, radiant in the brightness of your King. Christ has conquered, glory fills you, darkness vanishes forever. Rejoice, O holy church, exalt in glory. The risen Savior shines upon you. Let this place resound with joy, echoing the mighty song of all God's people. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that with full devotion of heart and mind and voice, we should praise the invisible God and the host, only Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who by his precious blood redeemed us from bondage to the ancient sin. For this is indeed the Paschal Feast, in which the true Lamb is slain, by whose blood the doorposts of the faithful are made holy. This is the night, this is the night, in which in ancient times you delivered our forebears, the children of Israel, and let them dry shot through the sea. This is the night, this is the night, in which the darkness of sin has been purged away by the rising brightness. This is the night, this is the night in which all who believe in Christ are received, rescued from evil and the gloom of sin, are renewed in grace and are restored to holiness. This is the night, this is the night in which breaking the chains of death, Christ rises from hell in triumph. Oh, night truly blessed, which alone was worthy to know the time and the hour in which Christ arose again from hell. This is the night, this is the night of which it 
which the bees your servants have made for the substance of this candle. This is the night, this is the night in which heaven and earth are joined, things home and things divine. We therefore pray to you, O God, that this candle burning to the honor of your name will continue to vanquish the darkness of night and be mingled with the light of heaven. May Christ the morning star find it burning that morning star who never sets, that morning star who, rising from the grave, faithfully sheds light on the whole human race. And we pray, O God, rule, govern, and preserve with your continual protection your whole church, giving us peace in this time of our Paschal rejoicing. Through the same Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and Amen. Let us pray. Eternal giver of life and light, this holy night shines with the radiance of the risen Christ. Renew your church with the spirit given us in baptism, that we may worship you in sincerity and truth and may shine as a light in the world. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of deep, while a wind, wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light. And there was light, and God saw that the light was good. good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness God called night. And there was evening, and there was morning. The first day. And God said, Let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made a dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky, sky, and there was evening, and there was morning the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth. earth and the waters that were gathered together, God called seas. And God saw that it was good. good. Then God said, Let the earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. good. And there was evening. And there was morning, the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons, and for days and for years, and let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. 
And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night, and the stars. stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. Good. And there was evening. And there was morning. The fourth day. And God said, Let the waters bring forth swarms of creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monster and every living creature that moves of every kind, with which the waters swarm and every winged bird of every kind. And God, God saw that it was good. good. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters and the seas and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening. And there was morning. The fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things, and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind, and the cattle of every kind, and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. good. Then God said, Let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish and the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in God's image. In the image of God, God created them. Male and female, God created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit you shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that God had made, and indeed it was. Very, very good. And there was evening. And there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day God finished the work that God had done, and God rested on the seventh day from all the work that God had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all work that God had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. The, the word, word of the, the Lord. Lord. Let us pray. Almighty God, you wonderfully created the dignity of human nature and yet more wonderfully restored it. In your mercy, let us share the divine life of the one who came to share our humanity, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. A reading from Genesis. The Lord said to Noah, Go into the ark, you and all your household, for I have seen that you alone are righteous before me in this generation. Take with you seven pairs of all clean animals, the male and its mate, and a pair of the animals that are not clean, the male and its mate, the seven pairs of the birds of the air also, male and female to keep the kind alive on the face of all the earth. For in seven days I will send rain on the earth for forty days and forty nights, and every living thing that I have made I will blot out from the face of the ground. And Noah did all that the Lord had commanded him. In the six hundredth year of Noah's life, in the second month, on the seventeenth day of the month, all on that day all the fountains of the great deep deep burst forth and all and the windows of the heavens were opened the rain fell on the earth 40 days and 40 nights on the very same day noah with his sons shem and ham and chepheth and noah's wife and the three wives of his sons entered the ark they and every wild animal of every kind and all the domestic animals of every kind and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth and every bird of every kind every bird, every winged creature. They went into the ark with Noah, 
and two and two of all flesh in which there was the breath of life. And those that entered, male and female of all flesh, went in as God had commanded him, and the Lord shut him in. The flood continued forty days on the earth, and the waters increased, and bore up the ark, and it rose high above the earth. The waters swelled and increased greatly on the earth, and the ark floated on the face of the waters. At the end of forty days, Noah opened the window of the ark that he had made, and sent out the raven, and it went to and fro until the waters were dried up from the earth. Then Noah sent out the dove from him to see if the waters had had subsided from the face of the ground. But the dove found no place to set its foot and returned to him to the ark. For the waters were still on the face of the whole earth. So he put his hand he put his hand and took it and brought it into the ark with him. Noah waited another seven days, and again he sent out the dove from the ark. And the dove came back to him in the evening, and there in its beak was a freshly plucked olive leaf. So Noah knew that the waters had subsided from the earth. Then he waited another seven days, and sent out the dove, and it did not return to him any more. In the six hundredth year, in the six hundredth first year, in the first month, on the first day of the month, the waters were dried up from the, from the earth, and Noah removed the covering of the ark and looked and saw what the face of the ground was drying. In the second month, on the twenty-seventh day of the month, the earth was dry. Then God said to Noah, Go out of the ark, you and your wife, and your sons and your sons' wives with you. Bring out with you every living thing that is with you of all flesh, birds and animals, and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth, so that they may abound on the earth, and be fruitful and multiply multiply on the earth. So Noah, went, so Noah went out with his sons and his wife and his sons' wives. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my co covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut out by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. This is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you. For all future generations, I have set my bat in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. The word of the Lord. Let us pray. O oh God, strength of the powerless and light in all darkness, look in mercy upon your church, a wonderful and sacred mystery, that it may be an ark of peace in the midst of chaos. Let the whole world come to see that what was fallen is being raised up, that what was old is being made new, and that all things are being restored to wholeness through the one from whom they first took being, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Genesis 22, 1 through 18. After these things, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, and he said, Here I am. He said, Take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains that I shall show you. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young, man with, young men with him and his son Isaac. He cut the wood for the burnt offering and set out and went to the place in the distance that God had shown him. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place far away. Then Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey. The boy and I will go over there. We will worship, and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on his son Isaac, and he himself carried the fire and the knife. So the two of them walked on together. Isaac said to his father, Abraham, Father! And he said, Here I am, my son. 
He said, the fire and the wood are here, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham said, God himself will provide the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So the two of them walked on together. When they came to the place that God had shown him, Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to kill his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here I am. He said, do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God since you have not withheld your son, your only son from me. And Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught in a thicket by its horns. Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place the Lord will provide. As it is said to this day, on the mount of the Lord, it shall be provided. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will indeed bless you, and I will make your offspring as numerous as the stars of heaven and as the sand that is on the seashore, and your offspring shall possess the gate of their enemies. And by your offspring shall all nations of the earth gain blessing for themselves, because you have obeyed my voice. Let us pray. God and Father of all the faithful, you promised your servant Abraham that he would become the father of many nations. And through this gift of faith, you increase your chosen people throughout the world. Form us anew by the death of your Son, that we may joyfully accept the new life of grace given through him, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. This is the story from the book of Exodus about the Lord delivering the Israelites from the Egyptians at the Red Sea. As Pharaoh drew near, the Israelites looked back, and there were the Egyptians advancing on them. In great fear, the Israelites cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, Is it because there were no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? What have you done to us, bringing us out of Egypt? Is this not the very thing we told you in Egypt? Let us alone and let us serve the Egyptians? For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. But Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. Stand firm and see the deliverance that the Lord will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you, and you have only to keep still. Then the Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward. But you lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it, that the Israelites may go into the sea on dry ground. Then I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go in after them. And so I will gain glory for myself over Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots, and his chariot drivers. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have gained glory for myself over Pharaoh, his chariots, and his chariot drivers. The angel of God who was going before the Israelite army moved and went behind them. And the pillar of cloud moved from in front of them and took its place behind them. It came between the army of Egypt and the army of Israel. And so the cloud was there with the darkness, and it lit up the night. One did not come near the other all night. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night, and turned the sea into dry land, and the waters were divided. The Israelites went into the sea on dry ground, the waters forming a wall for, for them on their right and their left. Um, the Egyptians pursued and went into the sea after them. 
all of the Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and chariot drivers. At the morning watch, the Lord in the pillar of fire and cloud looked down upon the Egyptian army and threw the Egyptian army into panic. He clogged their chariot wheels so they turned with difficulty. The Egyptians said, Let us flee from the Israelites, for the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, so that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and chariot drivers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea returned back to its normal depth. As the Egyptians fled before it, the Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea. The waters returned and the covered the chariots and the chariot drivers. The entire army of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea, not one of them remained. But the Israelites walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters forming a wall for, for them on their left and their right. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great work that the Lord did against the Egyptians. So the people feared the Lord and believed in the Lord and his servant Moses. Then the prophet Miriam, Aaron's sister, took a tambourine in her hand, and all the women went out after her with, her, with the tambourine and were dancing. And Miriam sang to them, Sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. Horse and rider he has thrown into the sea. The word of the Lord. Let us pray. O oh God, whose wonderful deeds of old shine forth even to our own day. By the power of your mighty arm, you once delivered your chosen people from slavery under Pharaoh, a sign for us of the salvation offered to everyone by the water of baptism. Grant that all the peoples of earth may partake in the salvation of the Israelites and together dance on the safe side of the sea. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Salvation freely offered to all, from Isaiah chapter 55. Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you that have no money, come, buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, and a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you. Because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their way and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord, that he may have mercy on them, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. Let us pray. Holy God, you created all things by the power of your word, and you renew the whole earth by your spirit. Give now the water of life to all who thirst for you, that rejoicing in your covenant of mercy, we may bring forth abundant fruit. Through Jesus Christ, 
our Savior and Lord. Amen. This is Ezekiel's vision of the Valley of the Dry Bones, from Ezekiel chapter 37. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. Mortal, can these bones live? O oh, Lord God, you know. Prophesy to these bones, and say to them, O oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinew on you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live. And you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded. And as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. And the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore, prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord. When I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. The Word of the Lord. Let us pray. Living God, by the death and resurrection of your Son, you have brought us out of sin into righteousness and out of death into life. Breathe into us, your life-giving spirit, that receiving the gifts of word and sacrament, we may live in the hope of all your blessings to come. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. King Nebuchadnezzar was so angry that things got all scrunched up and almost turned purple. Why was he so mad? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, three of, three of his workers had said no when King Nebuchadnezzar declared that everyone had to bow down to a huge golden statue he had made of himself. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego knew that God was the only one that they should worship. But this made the king so angry. No, no one disobeys the king. No one disobeys the, the king. The king demanded to have the men tied up and thrown into the furnace. He ordered to have the first turn up seven times harder than normal. Seven times harder than normal. Ouch! It was hot when King Nebuchadnezzar peeked into the first to see Shedrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He was surprised. He was surprised. I thought we threw him three minutes. 
women in there shouted. I thought we threw three men in there. But I see four men. But I see. Her. But I see. Th there and they're not but, even tied up. But I see four men, and they're not even tied up. They're fine. What's going on? They're fine. What's going on? The extra men in the furnace was an angel sent by God to protect the three men from the fire. The king flung open the door of the hot fiery furnace and called, Shadrach, Mesach, Abednego, come out of there. When they came out, everyone knows that the fire that they had that the fire hadn't even hurt them. They didn't even smell like smoke. They didn't even smell like smoke. The king was amazed, realizing what had happened. Your God sent an angel to protect you. You disobeyed me and faced death rather than worshiping something other than God. I declare that no one in any country say anything against the God of Sherah, Meshach, and Abednego, because no God can do what their God can do. The end. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, the only hope of the world. By the proclamation of your prophets, you declare to us the word of salvation. By the grace of your spirit, increase the devotion of all the baptized, that strengthened by your presence, we may withstand hardship and sorrow and be united with your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Dear friends, on this most holy night, the church keeps vigil, awaiting the glorious resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Apostle Paul teaches us that by baptism, we were buried with Christ and lay dead in order that as Christ was raised from the dead in the splendor of the Father, so we should set our feet on the new path of life. We give thanks for the gift of baptism as we come before God to make public affirmation of baptism into Christ. Let us pray. Merciful God, we thank you that you have made us your own by water and the word in baptism. You have called us to yourself, enlightened us with the gifts of your spirit, and nourished us in the community of faith. Uphold us and all your servants in the gifts and promises of baptism, and unite the hearts of all whom you have brought to new birth. We ask this in the name of Christ. Amen. I ask you, to profess your faith in Jesus Christ, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God, the powers of this world that rebel against God, and the ways of sin that draw you from God? I, I renounce, renounce them. them. Do you believe in God the Father? I, I believe, believe in, in God, God the, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. You have made public profession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the covenant God made with you in holy baptism, to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, 
to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. I, I do, do, and I, I ask God, God to help and guide me. People of God, do you promise to support and pray for one another in your life in Christ? We, we do, do, and, and we, we ask God, God to help and guide us. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O oh God, that through water and the Holy Spirit you give us new birth, cleanse us from sin, and raise us to eternal life. Stir up in your people the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they came to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, Suddenly, two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified and on the third day rise again. Then they remembered his words, and returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb. Stooping and looking in, he saw the linen cloths by themselves, and he went home, amazed at what had happened. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia.
We pray this night for the church, the world, and all creation. Empowering God, you bring us from death to life with Christ. Fill with courage and enliven all baptized so that your church may be a sign of resurrection in the world. Help us keep our baptism in our hearts and minds as we move through life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creative God, you brought forth life in many forms at creation. Teach us to treasure and defend your gifts of wonder that we have declared to be good. Help us to be wise and faithful stewards as new life reveals itself to us in this season of spring and new growth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Supportive God, as you delivered your people, deliver all people in distress and strife. Raise up leaders who listen to the voice of wisdom and righteousness for the people they serve. Allow calm hearts, minds, and voices to prevail among the nations of the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Caring God, bring forth hope and peace to all who are experiencing suffering or sorrow in any form. Heal those who are sick in body, mind, or spirit with love and compassion. Direct us in ways to serve those in need to show your love and care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Protective God, at the first light of dawn, Jesus' resurrection was revealed. Guard all who keep vigil in the night, tending to the sick, ensuring public safety, working or worrying. As they await the morning, may hope dawn upon them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Teaching God, this night we have heard lessons of love, creation, devotion to your word, willingness to follow your teaching and commands, and the promise of salvation. Help us to remember these words and their meanings as we approach the first light of dawn on this Easter day, especially during these times of change and uncertainty. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Resurrected God, you drew the amazed, the terrified, and the weeping to the empty tomb. Gather us with your people of all times to wonder at your power and rejoice in your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. To you, living God, we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in the one with whom we have been raised to new life, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. We greet one another with a sign of Christ's peace in our homes, on our screens, through our cell phones or whatever means we have. Let us share Christ's peace one with another. Let us pray. Holy, living, and loving God, we praise you for creating an earth of splendor and for making us into a people of your own. With all the saints who have received your word, we worship you, holy God. We worship you, holy God. We praise you for your eternal word, for conquering the force of death, and for raising us up through the resurrection of our Lord. For your word alive among us, we praise you, living God. We praise you, living God. Breathe the spirit of the risen Christ on us, that led by your word, we may honor your earth and its many peoples and serve all who are in need. For your word animating our Easter life, we bless you, living God. We bless you, loving God. All worship, praise, and blessing be to you, source of life, ruler of life, and power of life, today and forever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence the words our Savior gave us. 
Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
Almighty God, who raised our Lord Jesus to life, lift you up and restore you to wholeness. Amen. Christ, the morning star who never sets, scatter the shadows and fill you with light. Amen. God, the Holy Spirit, who renews the whole earth, refresh you in the gift of baptism this night and always. Amen. Go in peace, share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.